Uh, Liam Mitchell asks, if racism costs the economy in just the ways that you were describing, why haven't business leaders done more to fight racism? Um, why, why are they not? If, if what you just said is true about boards of directors or any, about the whole organization or about these other costs that you've highlighted, why, why don't we see those elites somehow doing more? It's a really good question. Um, there's a part of the book when I'm talking about climate change regulation, I'm remembering being an advocate for various public policies um, that were public interest public policies, regulation mm -hmm. um, for workers, regulation for consumers, um, you know, climate change uh, regulation. And I remember we had to sort of jump through hoops to say this was this is actually good for the economy. Cost benefit is not going to be so high. Here are all the benefits. The costs are actually minimal compared to the benefits, right? We had to sort of use the master's tools, right, to say that this is actually going to be good for the economy. Um, and this is, you know, that this is not, it, you shouldn't set up this, this um, sort of false competition between the economy and what is good for the people or the planet. And we would do that and it wouldn't budge the people who right. you know, went out saying jobs, 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 yeah. jobs, right? Like the business it, case, yeah. right? Right, yeah. exactly. The business case just didn't actually matter. And it made me realize that the people who were making these decisions, the people who were trying to influence, weren't actually talking about the economy as we understand it and are taught about it, right? Which is like, you know, the, the way we measure economic growth or anything like that. They were actually just talking about the current distribution of power in that economy, right? Their economy, their chair at the top of that economy, their current, um, you know, status. And, and that's a different question. And it's like, yes, actually you would have to give up that status. And yet I also think it's very important to be clear that, you know, the world that I wanna see is one in which losing status is not the same thing as losing security, right? That you don't need to be at the top of this steep, steep ladder in order to feel safe because everybody is more safe because the basics of life are taken care of by what we do in common. Um, you know, I think it is the scarcity model is very mutually reinforcing. If people feel like they have to have half a million dollars in the bank to put three kids through college. Like, you know, that makes people do crazy things to hold on to that corporate board seat, right? right. Um, so I think it, it is a mutually reinforcing cycle um, to have privatized all of these things that used to be public goods. Um, but I, then I also think some of it is, is, is not actually about the material. It's about the sense of status, the sense of value, and people are going to just have to seek other ways to feel fulfilled and feel a sense of self-esteem that is not about their relative position and having to be and being able to find other people that think that they are better than. Yeah, I think that, I mean, to me, that's almost the core or the central part of this that, you, that, you know, I've been doing a lot of research myself that says the business case kind of doesn't work that often. And, and it's in, in precisely for these kinds of dynamics that you're highlighting. 